Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to this Monday morning with me, Business Coach Malloy. Thank you so much for all your comments on the new series that we have started about uh, three years, three days back, uh, three weeks back. And we, we are so, 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 so grateful that you find it uh, interesting and someone used the word exhilarating. So please uh, write, keep writing to us on any theme that you would want us to cover because this entire fundamental of the of our third series, which is the current series that we are running, Business Snippets, is to link up real-life uh, situations, what has happened in industry, what, what is happening in industry in this hugely turbulent times to figure out uh, and, and link it up to theories that you could adopt or strategies that you could adopt in your business. So you will have to pardon me for today because I have a very, very bad throat. And uh, while I do not want to give the credit or discredit to anybody, but we had an amazing last three days in Guwahati. Met so many entrepreneurs, met so many youngsters, startup organizations, universities who are ramping up their uh, their, their infrastructure to accommodate the students. We had a fun, fantastic business masterclass on the Friday that was the 21st. And, and the kind of response and the open arm welcome that we got from Guwahati was humongous. We had the opportunity of going and meeting the Lo, Lo Udyog uh, uh, group and they apparently have about 700 members across Northeast of, of which 350 members are in Guwahati itself. <coughs> We are, we are collaborating with them. And in the month of September, we should be in a position to come out with our, with our first masterclass, business masterclass for dedicated only to the Lahut Yok members. So keep, keep watching our Facebook channels, keep watching our WhatsApp groups because a lot of interesting information is going to come in about how we can impact your business. So today, let me start with a story. One day on his way to Bangalore, Mr. Siddharth decided to jump off the bridge and commit suicide rather than face the pressure that he was subjected to. The organization that we're calling, uh, we are speaking about, ladies and gentlemen, today is uh, Cafe Coffee Day. And this decision came as a shock as the stock almost fell vertically and led to a consecutive number of, uh, uh, of quarters which were non profitable. It was then a lady, Malvika Hegde, took charge, the wife of Siddharth. So in a sense, the story of Cafe Coffee Day is a story of how the wife of founder took over the reins of a coffee day amidst a chaotic situation and turned it around almost single-handedly. The, the story of Siddharth is well known, but just a quick recap. In the mid-2019, Siddharth had gotten into heavy debt. Very, very heavy debt. And a combination of bad economics, bad decision-making had driven him further into uh, a very bad situation, into a mess, if I, if I can call that. And, and this was not even COVID. This was still about June 2019. This was much before COVID. And then he took the unfortunate step, probably not able to uh, withstand the pressure anymore of jumping off into the river. And from there, a beacon of hope emerged in the form of Malvika Hegde, the wife of late Siddharth. The void left by Siddharth's demise presented an uphill struggle. But Malvika had three things going for her, determination, resilience, and a commitment to uphold her husband's legacy. She took charge of the business in December 2020. And with a single-minded focus, she started doing what she wanted to do, save the brand she loved. And dealing with this enormous debt was her first task. Despite the external pressures of COVID-19 and an unprecedented financial crisis, Malvika took some very, very daring decisions consolidating and restructuring the business. And one of the, one of the uh, strategies, shrewdest strategies that she adopted was to avoid raising prices of the brand signature product, an unconventional move when you are in debt. 
Instead, she focused on downsizing. She focused on streamlining the operation. She focused on uh, productivity. She focused on outlets, uh, closing down outlets that were not profitable. She then strategically partnered with the Blackstone to decrease expenses and increase revenue. By 2021, the company's debt had started shrinking. And by 2023, it had come down to a manageable 465 crore. What makes Malavika's leadership truly commendable is the empathetic approach towards her employees. She had to assure the nearly 25,000 strong workforce of CCD that she would fight for the brand's survival, successfully instilling trust and confidence. And this was at a time when there were multiple other brands come. So the question that we're trying to address out here today, can failing businesses turn around and what would be some of the strategies for turnaround? Turnaround is applicable to the loss-making business unit. It's the act of making a company profitable again. As human beings, as people, we are, we are always told and taught, health is wealth. But a business firm is healthy only when it is wealthy. A turnaround is essential to the business, to the survival of a failing business. Turnaround is a sustained positive change. A successful turnaround is a complex process that requires strong management commitment and a sound business score. Investigation of the root cause of failure, the long-term programs are essential to revitalize the organization. Turnaround strategy is that revival measure for overcoming the problem of sickness. Implementation, ladies and gentlemen, in a turnaround strategy is the most important thing. Because often I've seen or we have seen, we have read that people tend to give up too soon. Turnaround takes time. Turnaround, will, you will have to go through a lot of pain process. And only when the pain process is over with, will you see the fruits of the, of the massive changes that you have brought into the business. So what are the steps that you would, you would adopt in a turnaround strategy? The first of them is diagnosis of the problem faced by the company. And too often, too often we, pardon me, too often we push the problem, <clears throat> too often we push the problems under the carpet. We want to ignore the problems. We want to, we want to just keep our eyes shut to the problems. And in some cases, the problem could be me. If I am not attuned to the business, then I could be the problem. So diagnosis is very important. Choosing the turnaround strategy is important. And third is the implementation. So when you're implementing, well, so when you're, when you're doing the turnaround strategy, the first is the exact cause of the business failure to be identified. So when and I recall in uh, 2020, when we, were, when we were faced with this unprecedented COVID situation, a lot of business owners came to us with the question, what next? So I remember we had, I had as an organization, I had done uh, a program with a lot of business owners at that point in time, which was broken down into three phases. Pathway for survival, pathway for revival, and pathway for growth. If you don't have a methodology to survive the difficult times, you can never revive and grow. So survival is important. To survive, you need to get into the root cause of the problem. And I like, like I said, it sometimes it could be just I, and I could be the problem of that, of that, uh, of that entire business failure. Number two, proper planning and execution. Once, so once your evaluation is complete, the next critical step is the turnaround planning. It is regarding allocating of resources, time frames, the policies that need to be uh, executed. Sometimes, uh, un unlike what happened in CCD, sometimes you may not need to get a, a turnaround strategist in place who has many years of experience of turning around businesses. In case of CCD, Malavika Hegde was the turnaround specialist. We do not know from where she got the wherewithal because that is not yet documented, but she was the turnaround strategy. 
uh, turn around strategist. The third is communication. Very key factor. It requires rapid response from and to the shareholders, financial institutions, employees, and management. And it has to be a complete, clear, and prompt communication. There's no point beating around the bush. So I was with a with a client of mine last week, beginning of last week, and we are doing the we're doing the business strategy. And we asked this question: Please commit what you can deliver. If you can't, please don't commit. So hence the communication, and it's a two and, and, and to and fro. The bad news need to be shared, even with shareholders, even with financial institutions, even with employees. The bad news needs to be shared. If they don't, if they're, if they're not aware of the bad news, they will not build the resilience within themselves, they will feel everything is hunky-dory. And even when the bad news is shared and people, and, and you're giving them a roadmap, you will see a lot of difference in how people embrace you. There will be people who will, who will be the naysayers, but there will be people who would say, okay, I put up my hand because you are walking on that path and I want to walk that path with you. Fourth, availability of funds. It requires business restructuring, financial restructuring. Lack of investments could lead to low crop yields and huge, huge wastages. So when you're turning around, you will have to look at financial institution. You will have to look at the shareholders. You will have to look at restructuring of debt because you will need funds. Fifth, cooperation. Seek for help. If you don't seek for help, you will never ever uh, get what you want. So there's a very interesting story. One day a father and her daughter and his daughter were walking in the jungle and there was a small tree which had fallen on the path. The father, uh, the daughter asked the father, father, do you think I can move that tree? And the father said, Yes, if you use all your strength, then certainly you can move the tree. The daughter went ahead and tried, and she failed. She came back. She says, Father, I'm not able to move that tree. And the father said, please use all your strength. The daughter went, uh, went ahead, tried again, and came back. Failed. He says, Father, I can't do it. So the father asked the daughter, have you used all your strength? She says, yes, father, I've used all my strength. I've pushed it, I pushed it. Father said, no, lady, you have not used all your strength. You have only used your strength. I am also there with you and I am also your strength. Have you asked me to join you in this journey, in this moving of the tree? Both of them went ahead and they just had to push the tree aside. Sometimes we get stuck in that I factor. We don't go out and ask people for help. We don't use all our strengths. We only use our strengths. Very important lesson because you're building an organization. You have multiple stakeholders in your business and you need the cooperation of everybody. With employees, family, financial institutions, shareholders, stakeholders, distributors, uh, suppliers, anybody. And number six, the viability of the business. Turnaround would be applicable only if there are chances of revival and success uh, of a business firm. There should be a viability study. So many people, business owners, and I, and I, I was speaking to a couple of business owners in uh, in uh, Guwahati. They want, they have long, they have designed the product, but they have not done a business plan. They have not done a financial feasibility. They have not done a market uh, sizing. They have not done a market mapping. They have, they have not gone gone out and asked the question: Is my business viable? If your business model itself is not viable, then no turnaround strategy will work. In short, viability of business is an essential requirement for a good turnaround strategy. So ask those difficult questions. Because people make mistakes 
And choosing the wrong road will result in a failing business understanding on how this turnaround is a must. So what are some of the tips that you need to have when you're about to salvage a failing business? And the first that I have kept on repeating over probably my 65 weeks that we have been together, 65, 70 weeks that we have been together is mindset. And mindset goes deeper into EQ, emotional quotient. You need, to un you need to learn to manage your emotions. You need to have a positive mindset and you need to learn to manage your emotions. One of the biggest challenges folks that end up with a business issue face is how to remain positive and how to have a, a balanced EQ. How you deal with failing businesses will have a huge impact on how things progress. Set a mindset which is positive. Set realistic goals that you think are achievable. Not only do you need to remain positive for yourself, but you also need to maintain positivity amongst your employees because please understand the employees are watching you. And if you communicate, and if you are communicating fear, if you are communicating give up, if you are communicating this will not happen, your employees will not be with you. And for turnaround strategy, for any business for that matter, you need your employees around you. Without them on your side, any business, especially a turnaround, is an impossible task. You will be surrounded by naysayers. You should be prepared to deal with them. And dealing with them does not mean overreacting. Right? Second, be honest with yourself. If you're not sure what the issue is, and what are the problems, you can't solve them. So it may be hard to take a reality check, but it's a necessity if you want to push your business in the right direction. I can't tell you how many times I've seen business owners bury their heads, heads in the sand or are completely delusional. The truth may hurt, but without it, there is no future. Third planning. And again, I made the statement multiple times, failing to plan is preparing to fail. That's a mantra for, for, for every business owner. That's, that should be a mantra for every individual on this planet. Stabs in the dark will be unlike to, unlikely to make any true difference to a business. Plan in a meticulous, cautious fashion on how to get from A to B to C. Sometimes you will be faced with uh, opportunities or threats which are not as per your plan. Bring them onto the plan. Too often, we are running around like headless chicken. Somebody tells me to do something, I go out and do it. Please plan. Planning sets of success and also means you have the opportunity to see a realistic way of getting out of that mess. Fourth, money management. You, as it is, you're running short of cash. And this means that you need to make cuts where they are made being cautious and meticulous about where the money is being Excuse me. It's been spent with your significant help. Find out where the money is leaking and focus on cutting all needless costs. Fifth, look for a business partner. The power of two minds is double than the power of one mind, if, especially if it is someone who has faced similar problems in the past. Your business will achieve a lot more with the help of another person or a business partner than it will be just with you. It could be a turnaround specialist. It could be a co-founder. It could be a critical employee. It could be anybody. You need to find that someone who can help provide advice, investments, and supplies to your business and help it turn around. Next, sixth, profit often means fewer clients. Every business has clients that took on that cause a lot of heartaches, but offer little in the way of profit. For a lot of failing businesses, these clients are time heavy because they don't contribute to the profit. Raising prices or letting these clients go can be a good call and help a good business succeed. Instead of tying your business down to these clients, you can focus on high paying quality clients that are loyal to you and beneficial to you. People, staff, 
I've said this again, that without your staff on your side, without your staff having confidence in you, it is not your confidence in the staff. It is their confidence in that you, that they're being led by a good captain is very critical. And that links up to the morale. The more you, more the more the employees, more your team are aligned to you, the morale will be high even in difficult times. Because every business, business, good or bad, not even uh, not even a failing business, will go through the ups and downs. So is your is the morale of the organization high? Customers, they are the center to your business, and you really want them to support you. Otherwise, there's no hope. There are numerous ways to encourage your customers to get onto your side and to get them to provide you with constructive help. Ask them to uh, be open and provide feedback on products and services. Ask them to provide ideas for your business, for your products or services that they would want to get from your business. There may be things that you don't want to hear. However, paying attention to these things can save your business. And finally, be open to new ideas. So many businesses are paralyzed by failure. Don't get into a decision-making paralysis. And because of this, they tend to end up like a rabbit in the headlights. Failure can be the first step to success and embracing it as an opportunity to try something new can often lead to greater success. Turnaround takes time. Turnaround of a business takes time, effort, and open-mindedness. But it can be done. CCD is the is one of the appropriate examples, one of the fantastic examples. And there are hundreds of such organizations which they have gone through a turnaround strategy. If you have a business that is, that is in trouble, if you have a business that has taken a downturn, then these tips can certainly help you. And if you want help, we are always there to help you because it's our duty, we believe, to help an entrepreneur Take go on a journey of success. Reach out to us because we have multiple programs, customized group coaching programs, one-to-one -one, uh, mentoring programs, which were all customized to individual needs of the business. Reach out to us and we shall help you go to where you really want to or probably where you've never been to. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, I hope you have been able to catch hold of our first book. The second book is on the way, so please don't miss this. It's available on the Amazon Kindle. This is available on OT. In case you're finding it difficult to get a hold on it, please let us know and we shall send one copy to you. Till next Monday, same place, same time, with a new episode on business snippets. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and have a great week ahead.